Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, in the meantime, the next presenter is adjusting everything. I will just give you an update of where we are up to, given that this, uh, this part of the mini-conference is uh, a little bit more fast speed. So uh, again, thank you very much, all of you, for coming. Uh, maybe new faces. I am Nicola Sardodi, the organizer of the MiniConf. Um, the spirit of the MiniConf is to join ideas, discuss our, about parallel programming, multi-core, open source, Australia, New Zealand. Ah, South Island. <laughs> um, half past one, five to two, we have you oriented parallel programming. Ji Huang is from the University of Otago. Then immediately after that, we have scientific computing. And when I say immediately, it means that probably it would be good to start to finish the presentation five minutes before, or maybe the dynamic that we had with the previous presentation with James that could work about the questions. But what I'm trying to do is to keep uh, moving everything so all of the presenters that have been doing have been doing a really good job on preparing for the conference. So all of us, all of you, have time to uh, reach the conclusion that I'm aiming to present. So I have absolutely no doubt that after the presentation, everyone will be open for questions. We have then. You have all the program, I don't need to read it for you, but then we have half an hour for an afternoon tea, which probably will be consumed for questions. And uh, the last part ends with a panel and the bo birds of a feather, which the aim would to organize that it's, again, as I say, the idea is to discuss together. Is this something that could be done from here to the rest of the world about this? Is there a community in Australia and New Zealand about open source parallel programming? Is it worth to explore that? So that's the idea. Ready? Thank you very much. Good. Yeah, today I'm going to talk about view-oriented parallel programming. I'm from Otago University, and uh, I've been working on parallel programming or parallel computing for about 20 years. Uh, this is just our recent work on parallel programming. Uh, this morning, uh, James and uh, Lenz, they have talked about the different programming styles. James especially focused on uh, shear everything programming style, and uh, uh, Lenz talked about uh, message passing style. So basically, I'm, today I'm going to, going to talk about something in between. It's a kind of a mixed model. So we all know we need to do parallel programming. Uh, it's not inevitable, given the memory wall or given all the power, power problem. So we have to uh, get on board with parallel computing. And uh, actually, the essence of parallel computing is a kind of multitasking. So we are very familiar with it. I think our human beings are very uh, are natural multitasking uh, performer. So basically, we can do parallel cooking. You know, you can use multiple stove to do this uh, multiple things at the same time. So we are, in I think, in principle, we are get used to it. But however, why parallel programming seems so difficult uh, in reality? So I'm trying to address this kind of difficulty, uh, fundamental difficulty for parallel programming. So for parallel programming paradigms, I think we need to focus on uh, three criteria. First is the parallel programming model should be easy to understand so that uh, we can understand the, the side effect or whatever or the consequence of the model if we do something uh, about the model. And the second criteria is just easy to use. So it seems to be easy to understand that easy to use is the same thing, but actually they are very different. 
uh, for example, like MPI model, message parsing model, is uh, very easy to understand because it's very simple. You just send and receive messages. But it's not easy to use because the level is too low. And uh, it's hard, especially when you come down to uh, debugging and also the sort of coordination issues. It's hard to use. And uh, the third one is, of course, is, uh, enable high performance. That's also the key point of parallel computing. Otherwise, we don't need parallel computing. The essence is we need high performance so that we turn to parallel computing. And the fundamental issues in parallel computing is basically uh, one is time, one is space. So if we look at the parallel computing, uh, the time issue is about the synchronization between different computing entities, like different tasks. Uh, the, they are ordering uh, or the, how to schedule them, load balancing, those sort of issue. Another issue is basically about uh, space problem, how to avoid the collision between you know, uh, different computing entities to avoid issues such as data race. So those two issues, uh, like mutual exclusion or data race, are actually hot issues in parallel programming. And actually, the time and the space issue, they might convert with each other. Uh, for example, uh, in let's say passing interface, there's no, seems there's no uh, space issue because they have converted a space issue into a kind of time issue. So they avoid space conflicts by using message passing. So basically, I will going to, I'm going to compare uh, these two different styles, like a shear everything and also message passing model <coughs> in general. So basically, we have a, traditionally, we have two camps. One is shear the memory model, another one is message passing model. Message passing is really easy to understand because everybody think, oh, that's easy. We get the essence, we just pass the messages. But actually, it tends out to be very difficult to use. And uh, I often heard about the complaints from MPI users that they think it's very hard to use uh, MPI or message passing, especially when the number of processors is increasing. Uh, shared memory model is relatively easy to use and uh, is very straightforward. Basically, you just share everything. Uh, sometimes we have difficult problems. It's, hard, it's difficult to understand the issues, sometimes like uh, data race or data log, those kind of issues are there, and sometimes we have low performance. So basically, I'm going to just address two issues related to parallel programming. One is a data race, another one is data log. Data race is uh, multiple processes or multiple computing entities right to the same memory location, and one of them is uh, right without any sort of locking protection or mutual exclusion. And the data log of is obvious. So those two issues actually are very hard for parallel programming with when you use parallel programming with shared memory, uh, especially when we stress the software reliability. It's even a further problem regarding that a sequential problem is already a problem. We have a bucket software, but now with uh, parallel software, it's actually uh, this problem is ex exacerbated because uh, the data rest is even harder to debug, and also data lock is is also hard to debug as well. So basically, we have some solutions, actually uh, more new solutions from the traditional log-based programming. One is the transactional memory, which can avoid uh, data lock because uh, it can roll back uh, if there was any conflict regarding the access of the shared memory. Uh, but it still has a data rest issue because there's potentially if you don't use transaction, then uh, you might, different uh, computing entities might access the same memory location and the cause data race. Uh, another solution is uh, what we are proposing, we call the view-oriented parallel programming, which actually uh, use shared memory, but not automatically. So in this morning, uh, I think a gentleman mentioned that 
why shouldn't the way it starts just share everything style? Why not we share, start and share nothing style? So basically through VOPD, we start with share nothing. But when we want to share, we use view. So that's a kind of a, a, a style between share everything and also share nothing. We share, but we share it with some rules or with some uh, facilities for share the memory. And this kind of style can actually combine many different uh, programming styles like a, a log-based mechanism or transaction memory together and also can facilitate performance. So this idea actually is quite simple. We basically say any shared memory or all the shared data between the processes need to be partitioned into different non-overlapping sets of data. So they are basically uh, divided into non-overlapping sets of data. And uh, initially we assume they share nothing. And once you want to share anything, you need to create a view. So this is basically what we call a view. A view is a set of data objects which can be shared by multiple processes. So basically at the moment we are using processes instead of um, threads because uh, multi-threading share everything by default. And the generic VOPP rule is like uh, a view should consist of uh, data sets, data objects, and they should be always processed as all or nothing set of data. Okay, so basically they are atomic. If you want to define a view, that means you use the whole set of data at one time. Should be guaranteed the atomicity feature. And the view can be created and destroyed at any, any time. And actually, they can also merge and combine any time. That's not a problem. And each view, we have a unique view identity, identify. And we normally use the view primitives to acquire view. Before you want to access the view, you acquire the view. And after you finish using the accessing the view, you use release view. And this kind of rule can be, of course, uh, relieved by compiler support. We actually are addressing this kind of problem by automatically detect the view at the wrong time or uh, by compiler support to, uh, uh, to, to, de to partition the view. Uh, but at the moment, uh, in this talk, we are want to share the advantages in general about the VOPP. So we, we are not going to talk about compiler support in this talk. Also, this idea is uh, language independent. We can actually basically uh, apply this idea to many other languages. So this is an example for uh, producer-consumer problem. And initially, we can allocate a view, just a view malloc. Like if you use malloc to allocate a piece of memory, but however, that piece of memory is shared, not local. And once you want to access the view, you use a file view and with the view ID here. And you do whatever you want to change the data and you produce the data. And after that, you release the view. And that's a kind of producer. For the consumer, it's just a the view for read-only access and the reader data and the process data. And after that, release the view. So that's basically a very brief example to let you know the very fundamental idea of VOPP. Another example is a task queue. So we enqueue a, a task. Uh, each time we, we create a new task and uh, we acquire the view before we create a task. And after that, we use the view ID to enqueue the task data. Each time when we need to process a new task, we just dequeue the task or DQ the view ID. And then from there, we can acquire the view with the new ID. And then we process the task and release the view. So this is just another example to show you the style of VOPB. 
actually there are more uh, sort of uh, other situations we need to deal with, uh, or maybe very specific examples who we'll, we'll address that, uh, those specialties later. So the advantages of VOPV is it, it's really easy to use because it still uses the convenience of shared memory. We don't need to consider which processor we send a message. Instead, we just need to consider which view we need to acquire. And then once we get the view, we assume all the, the, the program can assume the view is get consistent uh, automatically by the system. And also it's easy to understand. Uh, actually, at the moment for VOPB, we don't need any locking issue or mutual exclusion uh, concept in the in the model. For us is when you acquire a view, either we automatically lock the view or we use transaction memory as such sort of mechanism to protect the automaticity of the view access. So the mental model is simpler. We only focus on which data to access instead of consider the issues like a data log or data, data race or mutual exclusion. We think those issues shouldn't be part of the parallel program. And the third one is the performance enabling. Uh, programmers can still use the view if they can fine tune the partition of the view. Then they can, we can enable high performance and the performance can be actually uh, comparable in distributed system with uh, MPI algorithm. We will show you the performance results later. So the philosophy of VOPB is uh, really like, we think shared memory is uh, critical resources in the future, especially for scalability. If you really want your program to scale well, you shouldn't use shared memory or just use some of the shared memory, a little shared memory. So VOPV give us an opportunity to justify using the shared memory. So if you initially will share nothing, and if you really want to share something, you need to create a view. That means you need to justify and then create a view for sharing. And the issues of data rest, data log can be removed from uh, VOPV. So first is data rest free. Uh, because we organize the shared data into different views. So that when we access the view, we can just protect the data, use our uh, page-based uh, memory protection to protect uh, the, the piece of view. So that if somebody else is accessing the same view, they will either have to wait, or if they don't use the, the view primitive and access it directly, they will get a page forward. So in that way, we can just protect the system from data rest problem. And another issue is the data lock. So basically, we uh, have the view primitives, which can acquire multiple views at the same time. The system actually can acquire the view in the same order for the whole system, so that we can avoid data lock. Also, we can adopt transaction memory for each view. So if we can, uh, if we want to uh, uh, avoid, totally avoid data, uh, data lock, and also enjoy the flexibility of uh, non-partitioning of the view, then we can go to transaction memory. We can use a whole piece of transaction memory and allow multiple processes to access the same view at the same time concurrently. And uh, underneath, we use transaction memory mechanism to roll back if there was any conflict. And the view is very portable because uh, we can hide the difference of memory architecture in, uh, in, in the current modern computers because we have a cache, we have a different layer of caches, and also we have memory and in distributed system, we have remote memory. So those sort of things can be all hidden inside a view. So we use the view concept to make it portable across the different platforms. 
and we did implement the concept of VOPP in both cluster computer and also CMT computers and with uh, high performance. And also we can enable uh, sort of view perfection you know, in this kind of uh, optimization to enable high performance. As I said, uh, this kind of idea is language independent. Um, it can be part of a language constructor for the view. And we also have uh, advanced classes of views which can deal with different situations, uh, uh, especially when we uh, want to access data at the same time, which we know there is no data risk at all. And in that case, we can use some special views, such as multiple writer view, uh, to enable high performance. And of course, uh, then uh, the programmer may face the risk of data race, but that kind of data race is only confined by uh, inside a view, instead of the, the whole program or the whole shared data. And also we use transaction memory view to uh, avoid, totally avoid data lock issue. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to. I think that the time is a little bit. Uh, I have 10 minutes. Or oh, 5 minutes? Yeah. So I will show you some results anyway, directly to the results. We have implemented two systems based on VOPP. One is a Vodka. Uh, which is based on cluster computer uh, and it's a distributed shared memory style uh, system. And another one is a multi, which is uh, based on CMT and we have implemented on uh, x86-64 and also uh, uh, Sound Niagara, in the, in the Sound Niagara uh, T2000. And these systems are actually open source, they are on the GPL. And if you are interested to have a try, you can send me an email and I can just give you the whole system. And this is the first experience is on cluster computer. We use a 128 Itanium 2 processor, uh, Itanium 2 processors running Linux. And uh, we have at the moment, we don't have many uh, applications, but we have uh, integer sort, Gaussian elimination, and uh, SOR, and uh, neural network applications to provide a preliminary performance results. And this is just show you uh, our performance with, uh, compared with traditional distributed shared memory and uh, message passing interface, MPI. And from the results, we will see that Vodka and uh, uh, MPR are very close. Even though uh, Vodka is slightly uh, less scalable than, uh, than uh, MPR, when the number of processors is higher, it's reaching 32. So these, are, these results are very similar. And another experimental result is we have done it on Sun T2000 uh, and it's on a CMT machine. We call the system is a multi. And uh, for this one, actually our system is a, the performance is very superior. It's better than OpenMP and MPI. Because MPI is good for distributed system, but actually for shared memory system which we have, if we have hardware shared memory, it cannot, uh, it has to copy the data from memory to memory. So that kind of copy is a big overhead. So basically we, uh, our performance is better on multi-core uh, compared to MPI. And we, we have uh, some other results as well compare to, uh, to MPR and OpenMP. And basically, uh, VOPV is the best among the three. 
and also we have used a helper thread to improve the performance and we pre prefetch the view from the memory to the cache when we acquire the view and we use another thread to do this kind of prefetching which has also improved the performance of, uh, of view access. So basically this is, a, a, I think, a very rough uh, introduction of VOPP and uh, we, uh, at, in, for the next stage, we are going to implement this style in a multiple cluster. Basically we have multiple nodes and also was uh, connected by a by network, normal network. And then we're going to test the performance and compare with MPR and other platforms uh, regarding the performance. The good thing is that VOPP can be adapted to uh, both distributed memory and the shared memory. And the other shared memory based systems like OpenMP and the Silk, they can only work on shared memory system and it's not easy to adapt it to distributed system. I think that's all for, from me. Thank you very much, Gigi. Uh, please join me saying thank you to Gigi. Uh, maybe if you leave the slide with the contact detail. That's the one. Somewhere should be a, uh, an email address somewhere. And we have time uh, for just, one question yeah. for a 30 seconds answer. <laughs> okay, you, you got the message. <laughs> so, and um, I had the privilege to work with you a time ago. So i um, absolutely sure that if you want to be in touch, you will be back immediately. I would 